Whatever. Welcome to the Sack of Sats podcast. I'm Pam Maldonado, joined by my girl Kelly in Vegas, who is living it up right now in, where are you, in some part of the beach in the world that's gorgeous and not in 20 degree weather? <laughs> I am not in 20 degree weather, Pam. I'm in St. Croix for the week. It's absolutely beautiful here. And uh, apologies for any Wi-Fi, lighting, all of the above issues because, well, I'm on an island in the Caribbean and things go wrong all the time. Oh my gosh. Well, we're here to bring you five against the spread contest picks in the NFL. It is week 17. There's only two weeks left. Last week was kind of a debt for us by chance. Because we had the Raiders, and that was our final one. We were 2-2 heading into that game, and they ended up not – they were had the lead, and the Raiders do what the Raiders do, and then they ended up losing outright and um, and ended up not covering the two and a half because they lost by exactly three. That happens. I'm still fine with that being the right side. But our best bet did cash. Last week, we happened to have the exact same best bet, and that was taking – who did we have again? Oh the Giants. My yeah, we had the Giants. <laughs> it is 8 a.m. and I'm just, It is early had, for you. I haven't I had any you. caffeine. So I'm like, wait, hold on. My brain's a little bit foggy. That's what I have, by the way. So for anybody that thinks I'm drinking a <laughs> cocktail this early, I am not. Not yet. I got Celsius. I have some more work to do. Well, last week we had the Giants that ended up covering pretty comfortably. This week, you send me a list every single week and we talk about it. Your best bed, you're like, oh, it's ugly, it's gross, and it is. Exactly my best bet. I sent you my link to my stack to my uh, stats that matter video for Yahoo. And I was like, oh my God, you and I have the exact same best bet. So we're going to do what we did last week and it's stick to our best bet going in and we'll figure out the rest of the four. But just a reminder of what it is that we are doing is we are picking five against the spread contest picks in the NFL automatically in is Kelly's best bet automatically in is my best bet. And then together we come up with the three, but in back to back weeks, since we have had the best bet same, then we're going to come up with the four. Um, so what is our best bet for this week, Kelly, my girl? <laughs> yeah, it's the good old Houston Texans. And so the next couple of weeks are going to be fun in the NFL because we've got, you just mentioned the Raiders, guys being benched. We've got uh, guys going to probably be sitting out because they've already clinched uh, either their division or a playoff spot or the week 18 is nothing to play for, right? Right. Week 18 – was kind of a different animal when it first got introduced because it's like, okay, what are we going to do here? And I'm not going to sit here and say, like, I've got it all figured out, but I do think avoiding certain teams is the key. Mm-hmm. This is a Texans team that's wanting to play for Lovey. They're not winning games, but they're covering games. Right. And so it's like they're doing just enough to prove either they deserve to be on another team, maybe they get their contract renewed, but they're playing hard for them. And that's not mm-hmm. something that we can always say that teams do. The other thing is, is this game is absolutely and utterly meaningless to Jacksonville, just completely right. meaningless. And I think that that's kind of something to consider. Jag, Jags have been good to me in the underdog role, but now we're asking them to be a favorite, something that they're not really used to. So I do think that a uh, Houston team that has had Jacksonville's number, you know, you're a Jacksonville fan for years. Mm-hmm. I mean, literally years, they could yeah. win 10 straight here if they win yeah. on Sunday. So something to keep in mind, uh, Jacksonville, while I never like to say from like a college perspective, we always talk about look ahead games like this game doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and say Jacksonville is going to be looking ahead next week to Tennessee. We saw Tennessee last night, Thursday night football. Mm -hmm. Everybody sat out and their mother. So I think they were looking ahead to Jacksonville as well. And I do think four and a half points is a little ridiculous. We know how good those divisional road dogs have been all season long. I also really, really like the under. The contest is uh, Texans plus four. But just to add on to some of the stuff that you said, Jacksonville is both 0-3 against the spread as a favorite this season and 0-3 straight up against Texans with Trevor Lawrence as quarterback. So yes, I also love the Texans as my best bet. This was part of my stats that matter. Houston, you mentioned how they are covering games, but they're not winning. They're one and two in the last three games, but they have covered all three games. And those were against the Cowboys, the Chiefs, and the Titans, and they beat the Titans outright. Now, what's di- different about the Texans, what I really like, is that the defense all of a sudden just like all came to life. They have forced eight turnovers in the last three games. That's third best in the league during that span. Since week six, Texans are first in pressure rate. They are eighth in sack rate. And the problem for Jacksonville is that they actually lead the league in dropped passes. So Trevor Lawrence has been playing really well, but he still just doesn't have like the wide receiver core that is helping him be even better than what he's been doing. 
And of course, look ahead spot to week 18 to the Titans. That is going to determine the division. That's going to determine who locks up a playoff spot, which is why we saw everybody sit out last night against the Cowboys in with the Titans. So I love it too. Texans automatically in. Let's go. Now you sent me a list of other three other games and I was like, okay, I agree with all of them. <laughs> <laughs> which never happens which never happens and the one time that it did i think we went like one one and four, four. <laughs> i did think about that when you said that before you hit the start button this morning i was like crap it's actually not a good not thing, a good thing. <laughs> well let's talk about a couple of them the one that i feel um probably most confident about is packers minus three and a half over the vikings it is absolutely absurd that one this is a three and a half line against a vikings team that is 11 and oh in one score games this is absolutely bonkers but why do you like the Packers do you think we should plug it in I do think we should plug it in Pam this is probably my second favorite as well and that's because Minnesota's already locked up the division right I understand that this is like a hated rivalry I mean back mm -hmm. from when you know Favre was a Packer and then he went to the Vikings and then he went into Lambeau and beat them so I think it is kind of an interesting uh storyline if you will with these two obviously Green Bay lost week one that was my best bet then I was so high on this Minnesota team to start the entire season Pam like was obsessed they got their overseason win total for me and then they really started to like flounder it was just kind of crazy. You mentioned the one score game stat, and that is exactly why I'm looking at Green Bay here. Green Bay has a shot to still get in the playoffs. Aaron Rodgers mm -hmm. is playing really, really Aaron Rodgers-esque lately, right? He's becoming a, a good leader again. He's not fighting with his coach or not seeing some of those weird things we've seen from him over the last couple of years. He's laughing on the sidelines. Yeah, he's like, he's having a good time, right? Yeah. Because it's like, at this point, like, fine, we suck. Let's embrace it. Except they go down to Miami, then win the game. Yes, Tua had a concussion. That definitely probably played a role mm. in that. But this Packers team, if they get out to an early lead, they're going to cruise. That's kind of my <clears throat> my one caveat here that kind of made me concerned, especially with laying points with them. They've got to go out and they've got to put up points early because if they play from this, like, behind thing like they've been doing, it's, it's terrible because – when you're catching points, it's completely different. You get the backdoor cover. If you're having to throw a late touchdown pass to win the game, it's not always uh, that great, depending on what the what the other team is holding. But this is a Vikings team that has been so bad to Kirk Cousins lately. Like, Pam, yeah. they're just letting him get clobbered. And the, guy, the guy's just getting destroyed back there. Yes, they still have Justin Jefferson, but remember, Minnesota plays inside. I was supposed to be at this game instead of on this beautiful island. And I cannot tell you that this isn't, that is where I'd rather be. Lambo is so freaking cold, especially first week of January. It's going to be an awesome game. I hope it snows. I hope it is just terrible weather because that will bode for our Packers pick even more. You're talking about Kirk Cousins and the offensive line. Yeah, it is complete garbage. He is one of the most. He is the fourth most sacked quarterback in the league in the last two games alone. Kirk Cousins has been sacked 11 times. And now you're facing Packers who have also come to life. Why? Because now they have a true shot at winning, at getting into the playoff. The only way for them, for the Packers to get into the playoff is they have to absolutely win both this game and in week 18. To help the case, though, that since week 10, the Packers are fifth in the league in points per drive. Starting out the season, they were 28th. So the offense is coming, gelling together. Everything that you mentioned about Aaron Rodgers, maybe now actually having fun, going up against a Minnesota defense that is allowing a league-high 4.8 scoring plays per game. They, We see it. Everyone scores on them. That's why they're not covering games. They're winning, but they're not covering, or they're having to make these absurd, like, 43-point comebacks in order to get a win. <laughs> like, it's just, I'm totally fine to put in the Packers. My one concern about it is the juju that the Vikings have. They sold their soul to the devil, and sometimes yep. they cannot just combat that. <laughs> yep. It's like Bill Belichick in the mid-2000s. Like, you just, it just, they they have something special going on. But I will say this, having already locked up the NFC North, yes, these two are hated rivalries. Yes, I'm sure that, you know, the Vikings love to go into Lambeau and get the win. But I think right now the Packers have all the momentum. And that right. is something that is very hard to quantify. I wish this line was two and a half, not three and a half, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. But that opening number went like that, Pam. Like the second the bookmakers put that out, that line was long gone. 
Yeah. Um, so another game that you like, we'll plug that one in as well. Another game that you liked was the Browns plus two and a half against Washington. I also agree with this. And for me, it is because of the Browns defense. What do you think about the Browns? Yeah, because of me, it's because Carson Wentz is going to be starting for Washington. What the hell are they thinking? You've got you've got Taylor Heineke, who does what he needs to do, right? It was kind of like when the Cowboys had Cooper Rush. Right. All of a sudden, we have taken the hot hand and put him on the bench. For what reason? I understand your franchise quarterback, who's worth hundreds of millions of dollars, came is came back healthy. It makes no sense to me. And I don't understand the move here, Ron Rivera. Again, not a head football coach. I think that this is a Washington pass defense that is the only thing that's, that, that is scaring me about this. Because Deshaun Watson has has not been great, right? Like, he's been right. far from great. But you mentioned the Browns defense, two-headed monster in the backfield, obviously, uh, with Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. I expect those guys to ground and pound because – surely they're not going to let Deshaun throw against this pass rush. You would think. Uh, the, I'd like the plus two. The lines moved in our directions down to plus one pretty much across the board. So Contest what I would is like. two and a half. Yeah, that's what I mean. We're getting a really okay, solid volume. number here. My concern is, is that Cleveland doesn't win road games. Mm. And we're asking them to basically win this game. But, win you know, game. games do land one. They do. Whether people think they don't, they also land two. And so that's something that I, I'm not going to like beat myself up about going, okay, I need them to win this game. I put them in a teaser. That was a very first teaser play I played this week. I said that getting plus eight and a half with this team is a gift against the, the Washington commanders. I'm sorry, Carson Wentz. We already know what we're going to see from him. first the first half of the game. It's going to be flawless. He's going to go out there and carve this defense up. And what's he going to do in the second half? He's going to throw two picks and fumble in the red zone. Browns are going to cover. I definitely don't mind that. And I'm talking about the defense. The Browns have forced opponents to punt on nearly 50% of the drives. That is the highest rate in the league. And now you're talking about Carson Wentz, the Cleveland. I mean, my only thing is we like fading Carson Wentz when they're going up against a good pass rush, but the Browns actually have not been that. <laughs> they are kind of one That's of the least true. pressured. They're one of the least pressured um, getting in attacking the quarterback. But I mean, it's their, it is, they just have a good, Ground, just a good defense and that's pretty much it that's like it's fading Carson Wentz against a good defense and it's not about Deshaun Watson for me it's about like yeah Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb they need to run the ball and leave Deshaun Watson alone like just like yep. figure it out next season <laughs> yeah um, exactly I would agree with that just just wait what are we doing here like I mean Jacoby Brissett Deshaun Watson doesn't matter to me who's under center uh I just need the guys in the backfield to just ground and pound this game low scoring 17 17- 14 final Browns win it kind of one of those type of deals. One thing about Washington is they did have a really good defense to start at the season. And then as in the last few weeks, they've kind of like faltered their 17th in allowing yards per pass attempt. Um, Their touchdown rate is 30th in the league. So they're allowing more touchdowns than they are field goals. And they are 23rd in rushing yards allowed, which is absolutely great when you are facing the two headed monster that you mentioned. Um, this is one of my least confident ones of the list that you sent me, but I still like it. And I also did a teaser with the Browns. So would you want to plug this one in? Yes. Keep it simple, stupid. I think so. <laughs> okay. So the other one that you uh, that you and I both agreed on, this was like a no brainer for me. And it's the Steelers plus two and a half against the Ravens. Um, my worry about this one is that the Ravens defense has been really good. And Neither team can score. <laughs> so it's like two and a half is like another. Ah, I hate the two and a halves. They're so hard. Um, but why do you like this game? <laughs> it's funny because whenever these two play, I mean, Pam, I've been watching the NFL for, I don't know, 20 some years plus, maybe even longer now than I think about 30. Good God. That being said, I feel like this line is always three, two and a half, three and a half. It is yeah. always in that no matter who's starting, it doesn't matter if it's Big Ben, it doesn't matter if it's Mason Rudolph, it does not matter. And I think that's what we see here. And what the, one of the good things about the Ravens is, what in the world is making noise back there? Uh, okay, one of the good things about the Ravens is that defense. And that's why I love this under as well. I tease the Steelers over eight and a half. That was the easiest teaser of the week in a divisional game. We know exactly what we're going to see from these two teams, and they're going to beat the ever-living crap out of each other. Yes, Kenny Pickett 
with his turnovers concerns me, especially against this defense. But these guys, like I said, it, it's always a last minute possession. It is always one of those t- knockout drag out type of games. And I'm going to go ahead and say that it's going to be something ridiculous, like 21, 20 final, which puts it over. And that upsets me because the total is 36. I just had to double check that. Uh, but I don't trust this Ravens team as a favorite. I trust them as a defense. I trust them to keep the game under, as you mentioned, they, they've just been soaring under the total the last few home games. Um, Pittsburgh, every time they play in Baltimore, the game goes under the total almost. So I like this to be a low scoring affair. Getting that eight and a half was huge, but I do like the two and a half here in the contest. I think these these teams are just going to beat the crap out of each other. Um, Just some nuggets. Um, Why I like the plus two and a half is because Baltimore has scored a touchdown on nearly 10% of the drive since returning from the bye in week 11. That is the lowest rate in the league. How are you going to put up points? How are you going to cover if you can't put up points? The Ravens have allowed a touchdown on uh, 10%. That's hold on. That's talking about the Ravens defense. Hold on. Let me get another nugget. (laughs) Why I like the Baltimore telling you Thursday morning, Friday, my fault. Um, the Steelers, man, no, this is just a tough game. <laughs> it is a tough game. And that's kind of where I, I'm at with it. You know, and we're asking to look for a lot. Listen, the Steelers, we we just talked about with the Ravens last week. And the Steelers had a lot of heart. But was it the Steelers playing in an emotional spot? Or was it the Raiders doing what the Raiders do? And that's exactly what yeah. it was. I mean, we've got Kenny, Kenny Pickett, who's got a couple fourth quarter comebacks under his belt. You know, the Ravens already wrapped up a playoff berth, basically. I'd love for them to win their division. I really would. Um, I have a AFC North ticket, but I'm not banking on it here. This this Baltimore team is a shell of itself that we saw to start the season. So this is the nugget that I was looking for. Um, the improvements from the Steelers offense is that since returning from week 10, the Steelers have converted. Uh, they are second to best in the league at converting third downs, which is fantastic if you are an underdog. And they were 28th in the league prior to that buy. So their offense is improving while Baltimore is still scoring touchdowns at the lowest rate in the league. So I will take my chances with a Steelers offense that is improving. Mike Tomlin, I always trust him. Um, Yeah, let's roll with it. Okay, so then that gives us four games. So of all the four games that you sent me, can I entice you in two options? It's either going to be uh, option number one is the Panthers plus three against the Bucks. Or option number two, I don't like the contest number because I initially liked the Saints plus six and a half against the Eagles. I know we're fading the Eagles. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> waiting for the comments. Like tonight. <laughs> oh, Kelly and Pam trying to fade the Eagles again. Maybe because it doesn't work out for us. But uh, if we had followed our gut last uh, two weeks ago, it would have yeah. come to fruition. Um, but so this time around, but the contest is five and a half instead of six and a half. So I don't like that. But no, I love those five and a half lines. I will say this. I prefer Carolina because like we've spoken about those divisional underdogs, especially on the road have been so good to me this year. They just have been. And you've got Tom Brady, who like, I literally had a buddy text me the other day and he was like, Cal, who do I start as my fantasy quarterback? And I forget who his option was, but the second one, he's, man, he's like, Tom's about to get hot. I'm like, Tom is not about to get hot. Everybody <laughs> stop. The kid behind me at Raymond James Stadium screaming, Tom, you're washed during the Bengals game. That kid's the smartest person I've ever met. Because oh I'm going, what are you talking about? They're, they're up two scores. It was like 13-0. I'm like, this kid, just this little kid needs to sit down. And sure enough, Four picks later, then we see him go on the road, get demolished once again. Oh this Panthers my team, God. ever since away, since firing Matt Rule and trading away Christian McCaffrey, they so been good. Rejuvenated. They dump off Baker. Now they got Sam Darnold. It's they're just they're kind of like the Texans. There, there's not a lot for them to play for, but they've got heart and they're going out there and they're winning football games. And that says something to me. Those are the types of teams I want to back versus Tom, who's like, all right, I'm ready to cash it in. I'm just, he just looks spent. So the Bucks, I love that the kid was like, he's washed. Yes. So Tampa Bay is a league worst, 3 11 and 1 against the spread. And they are the only team that is yet to cover at home. They're 0 and 6 and 1 against the spread at home. Now you have the Bucks 
at home playing against the Panthers, who you said have fight and heart. But when the Panthers have played bad rushing defenses, which you could consider the Bucks, they used to have an elite rush defense a couple seasons ago. That is not it. They had at least 185 rushing yards and three wins in their last four games against Denver, Seattle, including 320 against Detroit. They just completely dumpster trucked all over the Lions. The Bucks did allow 209 yards from San Francisco, and then they allowed another 200 from the Cleveland. Uh, from the Cleveland Browns. So the Panthers, I believe, are a very live dog. Now to always to also coincide with that, um, the Bucks, you talked about all the interceptions that Brady had. They are minus seven turnover differentials since week eight. That is the worst margin in the league over that span. Um it's just we need Carolina to keep to do just run the ball. Run the ball. <laughs> that's, that's exactly it, Pam. Because I, I also, obviously there's seven divisional unders this week and I have to play them all because I don't want to cherry pick, but this is probably my favorite one. I like Just them. run yeah. the football. I don't know what we're going to see from Tom Brady. I don't know if he's going to be able to throw it 35 yards downfield. I have not seen very many glimpses of like old Tom Brady this year, right? I've watched a ton of Bucks games and it just is not clicking. The offensive line is letting him get killed. He's over there smashing his Microsoft service surface because he's so pissed. Like this offense just can't get going. They're one of the best under teams in the league as well. And that's also because they're not covering. Right. This Bucks defense, I don't think can stop the run. I absolutely agree with you. If I'm Carolina, it is the same game plan as Cleveland. Run the ball down their throats. And it was actually... Um... The 320 yards that they had, 300, that was a franchise record, 320 yeah. yards without Christian in week McCaffrey. 16, <laughs> in week 16 without Christian McCaffrey, with guys, I can't even name like two players on the team, like Nick Chuba Hubbard, and that's about it, let's go Big 12. Yeah. That's <laughs> like, that's that's like, no, but that's the joke, right? And I, I laugh at people a lot of times, because there's guys that watch the NFL and that want to pass the eye test. They want to know every player on the team. They want to know the backups, and they want to talk about all these different things. I understand that that does go into a bigger handicap in college, but in NFL, it is almost next man up. Obviously, uh, you know, there's some guys that are irreplaceable, but Christian McCaffrey wasn't able to run behind that O line. And then all of a sudden, he's gone. And now we've got guys mm -hmm. that we haven't heard of since they were in college being able to go yeah. out there and just ground and pound. Something was not clicking clearly in Carolina, and it might not have only been the offensive line. Yeah. And we're talking about how in college players can opt out and they can choose to not play in their bowl game and yada, yada, yada. And oh, this week is meaningless for the NFL. You talked about it uh, at the beginning of the pod where these players, they're getting paid a buckload of fucking money. They're getting paid millions. They want to keep their millions. So they're playing for contract extensions. They're playing for bonuses. They're playing for incentives. They're playing to maybe get a better resume, uh, to improve the resume, to move to a different team. They are all literally playing for something. Maybe they're not playing for a playoff spot because they're already out of it, but they are still playing for something because these are professional men and they don't just like, oh, well, I'm going to opt out. Brown last year, that's when he had his meltdown is because he wasn't getting fed the ball from Tom and he knew he wasn't going to get his incentive. And yeah. so he threw a fit and walked off the field. I mean, yeah, that's, that's I get true. it. You didn't get your extra couple million dollars. That sucks, but uh, maybe like not act that way. <laughs> Well, those are our five against the spread contest picks. Then we have the Texans plus four against the Jags. That is both of our best bets. And then for the rest of the four, we're going to the Packers minus three and a half against the Vikings. Fingers crossed that we fade the juju. <laughs> Browns yeah. plus two and a half over Washington. Steelers plus two and a half over the Ravens. And the Panthers plus three against the Bucks. I like our card. <laughs> I like it. I literally, I played two of these in real life. I played two of the other ones in a teaser. And then I obviously played a lot of these totals. I, I may actually add the Panthers to my real life card. I love the Panthers. After we discuss that a little bit more. I think so. I think it's more one of my favorites than I would have realized. So you make a prediction every week. What are we going this week? We're going four and one. Yeah. And I don't know who's going to screw us over, but I, I really feel good about going four and one. I've been doing really well here on the island outside of uh, the Minnesota blunder. Uh, yesterday in the bowl game that was uh, not a very fun uh, over to hit congratulations to all of you that had the ticket outside of that it's been uh, it's been a really good profitable island time life so I'm going to keep it rolling here well do make sure to follow Kelly on Twitter at Kelly in Vegas you can follow me at Twitter at Pamela M35 and that does it for another episode of Sack of Sacks. Kelly have fun at the yay beach. thank you <laughs>